Andy Austin here in a slight divergence from my normal material. I'm now posting stuff on things like bowel health, IBS, constipation, chronic gastritis and other gastrointestinal problems. As some of you will know, I used to be a nurse. Then I went into mental health and developed various therapeutic models, which are now taught internationally, blah, 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 blah. Now, what I'm focusing on for the next few months is gastrointestinal health. Some of you will know that I have had long term health problems myself. Recently, I put on my website a new page outlining the problems that I have had, the interventions I have attempted, the suffering I have gone through, and my solution to that. The link is it below if you want to click on that and have a read later. It's quite lengthy. Do please leave a comment, thing of support, anything you fancy. Always appreciated. I've got a model. In this video, I'm going to be talking about laxatives and constipation, something that would really ruin your day. As you will know if you're watching this video, probably because you too have chronic constipation, it can absolutely ruin every facet of your human experience. It can cause anxiety, it can make you depressed, it ruins your sleep, it completely messes up your life. And then you take laxatives and then you suffer the opposite problem. You get stomach cramping, you get a bit of diarrhea, but it doesn't clear the problem. Since I went public with the webpage about my own stuff, I've joined a number of forums and I have just been amazed at the quality of problems that people have, the level of help they don't get from their healthcare professionals and the really, really bad advice that I see being shared on the forums by other sufferers who are well intentioned. So I'm hoping to rectify some of this stuff. I've had a number of messages from people as well asking me questions about this and that. As some of you will know, I used to be a nurse. Um, and so there's something that nurses know about constipation. So I want to share some of my knowledge from my previous incarnation as a nurse and basically make your lives easier. I have a model here. This is apparently antique. It's a vintage from Germany. The only bit we're going to be focusing on here is down here, this part. We have the colon, we have ascending, it goes up. We have the transverse, it goes across. And we have descending, which goes down and then lots of bits in between. And then there's the rectum where all the poop in action happens. What you need to know is where and how you're constipated in order to know which laxative and remedy you want to be taking. Just taking a laxative from the chemist, I'm constipated, give me a laxative, won't necessarily help you. You have to take the right sort of laxative for the right sort of constipation. It's technical. It's more than just eat a bowl of prunes and you'll be clear. We're going to look at six types of laxative and how they work, where they work and what they do. There is a seventh, that's castor oil. I'll be doing that in a different video. Castor oil is very, very special stuff. Those who've tried it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It deserves a video unto itself. Category number one. This is the bulk forming agents. The bulk forming agents are your classic fiber. So this is your bowl of bran for your insoluble fiber. This is the material that doesn't get digested. It bulks out the food and we have insoluble fiber. And that's the stuff you don't really see. Uh, you can buy these in supplements. These are your various husk, like ispagula husk and um, your things like fiber gel and other insoluble fibers you can buy prepared. Um, they basically s soak up water. Now these work by bulking out everything throughout the whole gut. You would take this with your food with plenty of water. That's quite important. And essentially it increases the ability for the gut to squish stuff through. All of this is all quite lengthy. Um, this part here is your digestion. This is the small intestine. It gives you digestion stuff. And then from there it passes into the colon, which essentially reabsorbs the water um, before excretion. Those of you who have things like IBS, you've probably found the bulk forming agents, your brand, your high fiber diet actually can make things worse. There's a degree of gas production that happens with that. Plus gas production plus increased bulk and all the other stuff that's going on with your IBS increases the swelling of the colon. That increases the pressure within the gut, the bloating, the unpleasantness, the thoroughly miserable time that you have. So a lot of people find a high fiber diet in its conventional form to actually make their IBS worse. Some people will report that having a fiber free diet, so essentially they're just going on the paleo or they're just eating meat, nothing else, can make the IBS symptoms a lot better, but of course it can increase the level of constipation because there's no fiber to push through the gut. In that case, what you want to be looking at is your soluble fiber. Easiest form to take that is in the supplements. On one of these videos, I'm showing you how to fill your own capsules with your own soluble fiber. You can save yourself a fortune from buying stuff from the chemist or from online, wherever you buy them from. Essentially, you buy your own capsules, a little capsule filling machine. It's all very cheap to do, very easy to create and fill your own capsules. That way you're guaranteed the quality. There's none of the additives in there. You're much better off. That's going to be in another video in this series. The bulk forming agents largely facilitate the overall digestion and passage of stuff moving through the gut, hopefully then out the other end. It won't necessarily cure your constipation. Here's the thing you need to know. If you're already bunged up, if you're 
already, so this part, this colon here and into the rectum is already bunged up. Your bulk forming agents, your high fiber diet is not going to help you. You've got to clear what's in there first. All you're going to be doing is loading the system up with more stuff than it can cope with and you'll make your symptoms a lot, lot worse initially. So you need to have, as well as your high fiber diet, you need to do something else to clear yourself out first. If you're taking a bulk forming agent to cure pre-existing constipation, you're not going to do yourself any favors. You need to do something else. Category number two is the emollients. Now these are largely osmotic type agents. What that means is they draw water into the gut. If you're already constipated, you have to drink lots of water. You take your emollient agent and as that works its way through, it draws water in. However, that is all very lengthy. That is all squished up and a very long tube that's all windy windy. You've got to get it to where the constipation is. So it's not necessarily going to have a fast action, if any action at all. It will help prevent constipation. It won't necessarily cure it. Here's what you can end up having happen. You're bunged up into the rectum and into the lower colon. Everything else is backing up behind it. You take an emollient. Good idea, right? Problem is that emollient is causing all the food and digestion products here to be nicely squishy squishy. So when you eventually lose the plug of constipation that's happening here, all the squishy squishy goes pory pory out the back end. And so that's when you can have a rebound diarrhea as a result of the treatment that you're having. You might not want to do that. You clear the constipation first and then take your emollient agents to facilitate the digestion. Got to get it around the right way. Category number three, the good old lubricants, a good old fashioned remedy of mineral oil. Now mineral oil is basically a highly refined form of oil, like engine oil type of oil. You get two types. You get the stuff that's used by vets. They give it to horses and basically large animals that are constipated. That stuff is not particularly refined. It tastes like petrol. It tastes like engine oil if you ever try it. Um, slightly, potentially carcinogenic. So you don't want that one. Don't buy it off eBay. Don't buy it online. Simply because a lot of the stuff is being sold for human use, but is actually veterinary use for once in a while. It's not so carcinogenic in animals for a very simple reason. They don't live long enough. We do. We live a lot longer so we can get the problems later on. Make sure you get the genuine mineral oil from the pharmacy. It's clear. It has no odor. It has no taste. It's completely inert from the senses point of view. Now what this does is it facilitates the transit of, it literally will lubricate. So it has a, there's a transit effect. So things can move through the gut a lot quicker. However, that's not really how it works. What it's doing is it's by mixing in with the food and the mush in the guts, this colon here, which is designed to extract the water from the stool, because everything is wrapped up in oil or mixed in with oil, it can't do the absorption job very easily. So you have a much more watery type stool. And what you'll find is that when you finally poop, you get a little bit, it's a little bit greasy, a little bit of mucus, um, a lot more water in there. Doesn't necessarily cause diarrhea unless you have a lot of it, but it does change the consistency of your stool. But again, with this, if you're bunged up down here, mineral oil going in on the top isn't necessarily going to change anything straight away. You need to have something that clears you first before you take the mineral oil. Generally, people take way too much as well. It, you only need a very small amount with food. Don't take it in between foods to try and cure the constipation. You take it with the food. Be aware that mineral oil does have a number of problems to it. Long-term use can lead to a whole bunch of problems as the mineral oil embeds in the colon. You've got to take it for a long time. The other thing it does is it, because of the absorption, is blocked. Certain drugs that are absorbed through the gut, they don't get absorbed so well. And that can cause you a whole host of problems. You're taking your full dose, you're not absorbing the full dose. So the bioavailability of your medication is not very available. Category number four, probably the most common. This is the hyperosmotic agents. Oh yeah. Now you did osmosis at school. It's where things move across a gradient. Something with high concentration and something with low concentration water moves across the gradient. Hyperosmotic agents draw water into the gut. These are the classic things like your lactulose, sorbitol, Miralax. So these are very common prescribed drugs. These are very effective and useful for long-term type use. What's happening here is again the same thing. The colon is drawing water out of the mush. I don't want to get banned by YouTube. It draws it out of the mush. What hyperosmotic agents are able to do is by because the osmotic gradient they, they create, that wins over the colon's ability to draw the water out. So you have a much more looser, wetter stool passing through. Now again, if you're fully bunged up here, 
taking an osmotic agent in this way isn't necessarily going to help you straight away because you've got to clear what's there first. Additional problems for those of you with IBS, lactulose does ferment a little bit in the gut. Lactulose is basically a sugar and as a result of that there's some processing of that within the bacteria within your guts. It produces large amounts of gas. As a nurse you could tell the lactulose people because they fart all night when they're asleep. IBS people generally don't fart so much and that's the problem. The gas builds up creating the pressure, the discomfort and everything else. Category number five are your salt mixes. These are largely saline or salty type things, um, mostly magnesium salts as well and often there's a proprietary mix of different salts in there. These are also osmotic agents. You would take these, take these orally um, with lots of water and essentially the osmotic gradient pulls water into the gut and it has an action all the way through the gut to increase motion and so on. Again it doesn't necessarily cure pre-existing constipation if you've got a hard rock lodged in there somewhere. It's not going to clear that out. You need to do something else first. These salts generally are quite a gently acting thing unless you take too many of course. So it's quite safe that you're not going to be taking say your standard recommended dose of the salt and then a few hours later you can't leave the bathroom. That's very unlikely to happen unless you're taking too much of it. So again these are quite useful if you need a longer term laxative to prevent constipation in the first place. Number six, the good old stimulants. Now the stimulant laxatives are your Senecots and your Bicycodols. Now Senna, there's lots of different types or several different types of Senna plant. Not all Senna has the same strength. Not all brands have the same dosing and the same preparation and strength. So if you switch brands you may have to switch the dose you take because they're not all equal and that's quite important to be aware of. So if you are using it I would recommend you stick with a brand that is familiar to you and that way you can judge the dose you need. If you take too much of this stuff it's going to cause cramping. The reason being this stimulates the, both the nerves and the contractibility of the, the colon and the rectum. So essentially this is the one that clears your bung. If you've been taking lots of laxatives to soften everything for days before and then you take the Senna, what you're going to have is initial cramping, the plug comes out and then you're probably going to have a couple of days in the bathroom as everything else is backed up which is now nicely squishy all comes flooding out. So be aware, Senna and Bicycodal they are contractility agents so they basically increase the pumping action of things moving across and through the gut and so these are really good for removing blockages. Generally though just taking one dose normally they say take it at night so you have a, an action in the morning and then you can start your day the next day may not be enough for those people with chronic problems so you may need to take it regularly for say several days in order to clear the problem and once the problem starts to clear you then need to introduce some of the other categories whether it's soluble fiber and or osmotic agents as well then to prevent yourself getting bunged up again here is what i've noticed that people tend to do they get bunged up they take a senecop they clear themselves the following morning they continue with the same behaviors they always do. Four or five days pass they get bunged up again because they're not pooping in between, because they're not having the osmotic agents or the, the soluble fibers. They take another Senecot and on and on it goes. They're perpetually working reactively to constipation that has happened. They're not working proactively to prevent it from happening in the first place. Things like Senna and Bicycodol, also known as Dolcolax, are very effective remedies for pre-existing constipation. They're not going to prevent it. The the other agents previously mentioned, they will be preventing the constipation from happening in the first place. Your stimulants are your remedies for when you get bunged up. It's important to understand that concept. What I'm seeing happen on the forums where people are constantly asking pretty much the same questions over and over, and then I'm seeing the same bad advice given over and over, is people are coming at their problem reactively. You've got to be systematic, methodical, and proactive to prevent it from happening in the first place. Senna is a good reactive approach but it's not going to help you long term. Then you need to introduce your soluble fiber and osmotic agent potentially as well or any of the other categories that work for you. It might well be you have to tailor your own approach to work for your own particular difficulty. And then number seven is the other category uh, which is some there's weird and wonderful esoteric medical prescriptions. Not going to go into those in this video and my favorite castor oil which is going to go into its own video. So that's a little round robin of the different laxatives. I'll do other videos specifically on each one. If you have any comments, please use the comment section below. If you have any questions, stick it in the thing below. Remember, click that like button. It helps me tremendously with the algorithms, YouTube, my fan base, you know, you know the story. I'll see you in the next video.